Good morning. This is the Timberlake Christian Church um, Kids Lesson, and my name is Mary. We are working our way through a series of unknown heroes, or maybe lesser known heroes. People in our Bible who we've heard their name a little bit, or, or even a little bit more, but they're not usually the hero of the story. And yet, the things that they did made them heroes to God and to us. We've looked at Mordecai, who noticed when there was an issue and stepped up and served people. We looked at Naaman's servant girl, who we don't even know what her name was, but she showed kindness and compassion on her master and helped him to find healing um, from God. We looked at Cornelius, a Roman soldier who was um, in the land of the Jews and uh, who had the ability to make them do whatever he wanted, and yet he cared about the poor and he prayed to the Jews' God and God heard him, and God answered his prayers, and included him in his family. We looked at Nehemiah, uh, a, another servant who had been taken away from his homeland, and was serving a king who ruled over him, and yet God gave him the boldness to speak up, and ask to go back, and rebuild the city um, that had been torn down, and, um, and the king allowed him to do that. Uh, all of those people are heroes because they were willing to do something hard with God's help and God helped them do amazing things. Now I brought my quilt with me today to show you. My grandma made me this quilt um, when I was a little girl and I have a sister that's a year younger than I am and we each got a quilt and they were in our beds because we shared a room because we had a big family and not enough bedrooms. Um, but every time I look at this quilt, I sleep with it, I touch it. I remember my grandma and how much she loved me. And I love that I have something that she made for me. It's part of the things that I love um, about my home is that I have things that remind me of family members. And when I look at them, I can remember not just the quilt, but that my grandma loved God and she loved us and she, um, shared so many important things with me, including sewing. And so the things that I have remind me of my grandma and her life and how it's impacted my life. Now, I, I bet if you look around your home or you ask your parents, there are things in your house that have come from grandparents or great-grandparents or friends, and there are stories that go with those things. And that's part of what makes us who we are, is those stories and those memories and the legacy that gets passed down from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. From your grandparents to your parents to you to maybe someday you'll have kids to share those things with as well. Now I don't know if the Timothy we read about in the Bible got anything from his grandma, but she did share with him the most important thing that anyone could share with somebody else, and that was her faith in God. She taught him about God. She lived out her faith to God. And so she passed that on to him. And even though it was a tiny little thing when we look at her life, she wasn't a great public speaker or doing amazing things, but she shared her love of God with Timothy. The impact, the changes that happened because she did that were amazing. She taught Timothy, but Timothy ended up going all over and telling people about Jesus and teaching them about um, God. And so Lois had a part of that um, work and that ministry as well. And in fact, if you read First and Second Timothy now, today, you're still part of the change that she made in this life and the hero that she was because she shared her faith with Timothy. So even little bitty things can have great impact now, I don't know about you, you're probably way more coordinated than I am, but I never could hula hoop. I'm not the most coordinated person. In fact, I'm kind of that kid who can't do a cartwheel and trips up the stairs. I don't know how. But recently, I learned that Jenny Doan of Chicago broke the hula hoop record last year during quarantine. A hundred hours of hula hoop. A hundred. Like, 
a hundred, like three days of hula hooping. Can't even imagine. It's a little thing, but breaking that record was a big thing for her. So I don't know if you have a hula hoop if, at home, but if you do, pause the video and go see if you can beat my hula hoop skills. It's not gonna take a whole lot. And when we get back, we're gonna check in with Ernie at the Bible Cop. Oh boy, are my feet tired. Oh, you poor dear. Here, have a seat. Thanks. Have some lemonade. Thanks for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Would you like a cookie too? No thanks, this lemonade is great. Are you sure? Well, maybe I'll just have one. You look like you've had a very busy day. Oh, I have. I know it's only been a, about a day, but it feels more like eight minutes. <laughs> wow. I see you've picked up a lot of autographs. Do you mind if I take a look? Nope. There you go. Usually people come here to get the big names like Moses and Peter and David and Paul, but these are all the little people like me. Well, I was going to ask if you would mind signing it too. After all, you were the grandmother who taught Timothy to love the Lord. Oh no, I'm no hero, really. You are. You shared your faith with your grandson and look what happened. You made a huge impact on him and the church. Oh, I can't take credit for that. It's all God. I can't argue with that, but you have to admit, sometimes the little things we can do for God have a big impact for years to come. You're right. I mean, look at all the names in this book. Because of Cornelius, Peter took the gospel to the Gentiles and grew the church even more. Because of Mordecai, the Jewish people were saved from a terrible disaster. Because of Nehemiah, the people of Israel were able to return home and live in Jerusalem for generations after him. And all of these people have inspired me to serve God and obey his word. I want to be like Micaiah, Caleb, and Josiah, and even you. Oh, you're very sweet. And I'm very serious. I know I'm just a kid, but I hope and pray that my actions will lead my kids and grandkids and even great-grandkids to serve the Lord. That's a wonderful goal for a young man. Who knows? Maybe one day you'll have a table at BibleCon with us. I don't want a table here, but I want to see as many people as possible seated at the Lord's table in heaven because of me. That sounds like the words of a hero. God be with you, young man. Thanks, Lois, for everything. I don't know if you saw a recent movie about Shazam, but did you know that Shazam was actually created in 1939? So he's like over 80 years old and still fighting crime. Looks pretty good, huh? Um, in fact, he had an, another name, Captain Marvel, when he was first, uh, first drawn, and now that name's been passed on to something else. But for a long time, Shazam was almost completely forgotten. Um, kids weren't running around their backyard yelling, Shazam! Until they made a movie. And then it brought it back to um, the forefront of people's mind that, oh yeah, there was a superhero named Shazam. So sometimes the things that we do are ignored or forgotten or overlooked for a long time. And sometimes we, we think that maybe our value is less if no one's noticing or recognizing what we're doing or how we're contributing to the world around us. But that's not true because sometimes even those tiny little things that you do, the seeds that you plant, the conversations that you have with somebody um, can bear fruit and years later you hear um, someone telling you a story about that. In fact, not long ago I got a Facebook message from somebody who hasn't lived here in quite a while but they had a family member that came and came to church here and was in our junior worship. And years later, 10 years later, they've grown 
and they still remember what was talked about that Sunday and it it made them think about God and want to to look for God and seek God and follow God from a long time ago when they were a kid amazing how God uses those little things to make something big happen in our story today there is a woman named Lois and we know hardly anything about her but what we do know is that she was a grandmother and she passed on her faith to her family so we're going to look for these verses in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 now, 2 Timothy is in the New Testament, so if you're looking at your table of contents, you're going to look under the New Testament. It's going to have a 2 in front of it, and then Timothy, and then you're going to find chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Now, these are the books um, that uh, are going to tell us about Lois. So follow along as I read verses 1 through 5 from the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I have been sent out to tell others about the life he's promised through Jesus Christ. I'm writing to Timothy, my dear son. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Timothy, I thank God for you, the God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I know that that same faith continues strong in you. Now, Timothy wasn't really Paul's son, but that was a term that said that Timothy was a young man who looked up to and listened to Paul and was guided by Paul as they talked about sharing God's news of great love with people in other countries. And what Paul is saying is, you have that strong faith because it was in your mother and in your grandmother. I think it's so important that we share our faith. We look at the picture of Lois, a woman who stayed home and taught her daughter about God and to love God. And when her little girl grew up and had a baby, she taught that boy, Timothy, about God and to love God and the way God works in our lives and the hopes and dreams that we have in God. And because Lois took the time to do that, Timothy's life was changed. He met Paul, he got to travel with Paul and tell people in other cities um, about Jesus and um, his big love and his forgiveness for our sins and the hope of heaven that we have with, with him. She, she probably wasn't well known, maybe not even in her own town, but we know her because she changed the life of Timothy and she taught him about God. That is the best thing that a parent or a grandparent can leave with their child is a living and real faith that they know God and they know how God works in their lives. They recognize Him, they trust Him, they believe in Him. And because they put God first, God continues to help them as they talk to other people. You know what, it's something that you can do. It's something that your grandparents maybe have passed on to your parents and now to you that God is real, that God loves you, that God forgives you, that God wants to spend forever with you in heaven. Check out um, this video and um, see um, how this artist has portrayed this story. Once upon a time there was this boy named Timmy. He lived with his ma and grandma in a little house on the edge of town. You see, Timmy was a smart little boy and always very curious. He would ask his mom questions all day long. Mommy, why is the sky blue? Well, Timmy, that's the way God made it. God made everything. It says so in the Bible. Come here and I'll show you. Mommy, where does the rain come from? Is God crying? No, Timmy, God isn't crying. 
The rain comes from clouds in the sky, and the clouds form from water vapor evaporating from the ground. It's called the water cycle, and God created it. It says so in the Bible. Come here and I'll show you. Mommy, how many stars are there? Oh, Timmy, there are more than even a smart little boy like you could count. But did you know that God made all the stars? And he even named every single one of them. It says so in the Bible. Come here and I'll show you. Well, when Timmy's mom wasn't around, Timmy would ask grandma questions. Grandma Lois, are you older than God? Oh, no, Timmy. I'm old, but not older than God. Grandma Lois, how old is God? Where, Timmy? God is ageless. That means he's always been around. He didn't have a beginning, and he'll never stop being around. Come here, and I'll show you where it says it in the scriptures. No, Grandma, we can't look in the scriptures. We have to look in the Bible. That's what Mommy does. Oh, Timmy, the scriptures are just another name for the Bible. Oh, okay, Grandma. Well, Timmy continued to ask questions as he grew. And soon, man, he learned to read and quickly began reading the Bible for himself, man. He realized some amazing stories about floods and giants, and whales and lions, man, and fire and furnaces. He also read about the history of the nation of Israel, man, and how God was going to use them someday to bless the whole world. Man, Timmy learned about a man named Jesus who was born in Bethlehem, grew up in Egypt, and then moved to a little town called Nazareth. Timmy knew, man, that Jesus was the Messiah, that the Bible promised would come and save the world from their sins, man, because he read all about it in the Bible. Well, one day, man, Timmy was a teenager, and this man named Paul came to town. See, Paul had actually met Jesus and told Timothy some amazing stories. Paul was a missionary and traveled all over the world telling people the good news about Jesus. Man, Timmy loved to hear all about his amazing adventures. Man, Timmy even got a chance to go with Paul on some of his adventures. Paul? Why won't the boat sink? Just row, Timmy. We'll talk later. Timmy continued to ask questions, learning more and more and more from the scriptures, man. And if you open your Bible today, you'll find two books out of the scriptures with Timothy's name on them. When we think about the amazing things that God does and the people that he uses to do those amazing things, we're reminded of stories like when Jesus fed the 5,000 with just a few fish and bread or when um, God used Moses to open up the Red Sea so that everyone could escape from Egyptian army, or when Elisha raised the, the boy from the dead. And we don't always think about the, the little stories, the grandmother who taught her son about God. And yet, God uses both of those things, big and little, to tell his story and to let people know that they're loved and cared about. Both of them are heroes, both Moses and Lois. It reminds us of our verse from Matthew 20, 16 that says, so the last will be first and the first will be last. You don't have to have the most important job to be able to make a difference. You don't have to have the most name recognition or to be the most popular to make a difference. You just have to be willing to obey God and, and share that love with somebody else. You don't know. You choosing to be kind to someone at school might change their life. You choosing to help somebody at the grocery store might change their life. Your choice to invite your friend to, to church or to VBS could change their life. You don't always know what the future holds, but what you can do is listen to God and obey him right now, today. And all of those things that start with the things that we can do for God, we do that because we love God, because we know that he loves us. Maybe you've never chosen to follow God. 
And that's where you would need to start to be a hero for God, is to be in his family, to say, God, I want to do what you want, not what I want. And that's so hard. If you want to be part of God's family, you have to say, I've messed up. I'm not good enough to be with God because I have sinned. I don't love God and love other people perfectly. And that has to be something that we say, I can't do this by myself. I need you. If you want to be in God's family, you have to say, you know what? I am going to do this differently. I'm so sorry for the wrong things that I've done. And I'm sorry enough that I want to change. I want to do it your way and not my way. You have to be baptized. Our verses that tell us that Jesus' blood, his death and burial and resurrection is how we access that forgiveness for our sin because he was the perfect sacrifice. And so when we're baptized, we are washed clean and God comes and lives inside of us and lives with us forever as we choose him and put him first. If you want to be part of God's family, if you want to be a superhero who does big things or even little tiny things, you can do that today and I hope you will. I hope you remember that Lois, even though she's hardly mentioned in the Bible, did a big thing by sharing God with her family. You can do that and you can share God's love with the people around you at school, um, in sports, at the store, in your neighborhood, wherever. You can make a big difference. We are going to keep going with our superhero series, but we're going to take a little bit of a break. And for the next couple of weeks, since it's getting close to Easter, we're going to be talking about some of the stories that lead up to Resurrection Sunday. So next week when we come back, be prepared for a little bit different theme. And then after Easter, we'll come back and finish this series on who, on superheroes. You can be a hero, and so can I. All we have to do is listen and obey and share God with other people. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.